today in the Christian Church is the day we celebrate the Transfiguration of Christ. In the world outside, however, it's better known as Valentine's Day. Transfiguration Day is by far the more important of the two. But I certainly hope that all the men in the church have remembered that it is also Valentine's Day. If you didn't remember that, you're in trouble. If you get an email from Hallmark offering you discounts on apology cards, or if you wake up tomorrow morning with a florist ad stapled to your forehead, you'll know you forgot it's Valentine's Day. So gentlemen, I hope you remembered, and if not, try to make it up right now. However, for this morning, we're going to a mountaintop with three of Jesus' disciples where they have an unforgettable experience. All right, let's get at it. Come and let us worship. Jesus called himself the light of the world and in doing so accepted the commission to shine the light of truth into areas darkened by falsehood and ignorance in order that the brightness of love and compassion could shine in the lives of those shadowed by fear and hatred. God calls us outside ordinary reality to allow our lives to glow with his presence within. Come, let us worship God. Let us bow our heads before God and let us pray. God of grace and glory, to this worried world you reveal your presence in radiant glory and in gentle whispers, on mountain tops and in shadowed valleys, in classrooms and hospital beds, in homes and churches, in the quiet of nature and on the busy streets. Yours is the presence that pushes past, out, past our fear to calm us. Yours is the love that transforms our doubt with reassurance. We come to dwell in your goodness and offer you the praise that you deserve. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that many things keep us from trusting fully in your love. We are often distracted by our own desires and disappointments. We cling to anger and resentment. We fear for the future rather than seek signs of hope. Almighty God, forgive us. Shine your love upon us so that your glory may be seen in us and give us courage to follow Jesus wherever he leads all of these things. We pray in the name of Jesus, the one who has taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
scripture reading for this morning on this Transfiguration Sunday is taken from the Gospel of Mark, reading from the ninth chapter, verses 2 to 9, in the New Revised Standard Version. Listen now to the Word of God. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen, until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The title for the message today is taken from one of the astronauts, James Irwin. I'll mention him a little later. And he used this phrase, and I thought it was just excellent for this passage. Outside normal reality. Let us bow our heads. Let us pray. Abide with us, Heavenly Father, through this time of reflection. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. A group of mountain climbers set out to conquer a high mountain. One of their number was making his very first climb. The climb was strenuous, but at last they reached the small plateau at the top of the mountain. The novice climber stood straight up with his arms raised up and yelled, I did it! And at that point, a strong gust of wind nearly blew him off the mountain. The more experienced climbers had a real good laugh and explained to him that, listen, when you get to the top of the mountain, you never stand up, but rather you drop to your knees to avoid being blown off the mountain. When it comes to mountaintop experiences, go to your knees. Some background information that I think will help us understand the power and the impact of that mountaintop experience. Chapters 8 and 9 of Mark's Gospel contain some of the most important events in the New Testament. Chapter 8 begins with the feeding of the 4,000. An outside of reality, uh, ordinary reality event. And it ends with Peter declaring that Jesus is the Messiah and with Jesus predicting his own death. The disciples were shocked and confused when Christ said that he must suffer and die. That wasn't what they had signed up for when they decided to drop everything and to follow him. When Jesus called them to go with him up the mountain, they were ready to go. But in no way were they prepared for what would take place. The Bible says that in the presence of his best friends, Jesus was transfigured. A word from the original Greek, metamorpho, which simply means to change form. Christ's clothes became dazzling white such as no one on earth could bleach. As if this weren't enough, 
the disciples saw Jesus talking with Moses and Elijah, both of whom had been dead for hundreds of years. Moses, <clears throat> you will recall, gave the people of Israel the Ten Commandments and led them to the Promised Land. Elijah was the first prophet of Israel and at his death was taken up to heaven by a chariot of fire. These two men represented the law and the prophets, the sources of authority in Jewish life. Have you ever been so shaken that all you could do was babble? People react in different ways to fear. Some become talkative, like Peter. Others, they go silent. Fear does many strange things to us. This was not only time, this was not the only time that the disciples were fear, fearful in Jesus' presence. There were many such occasions. Do you remember when Jesus walked on the Sea of Galilee to join the disciples in their boat out on the water? Matthew records that when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. When Jesus appeared after his resurrection, Luke says they were frightened and terrified. They thought they were seeing a ghost. In our text today, Jesus tries to tell his disciples for a second time that he must be crucified, but that after three days he would rise. Mark says they didn't understand what he was talking about. But they were afraid to ask him. Gentle Jesus, meek and mild? How could anyone ever be afraid of Jesus? We have so sentimentalized this man from Nazareth that we cannot even imagine grown men being afraid in his presence. And yet, these three fellows were shaking in their sandals. And why not? If Jesus is the Son of God, who could help being fearful in his presence? Here was absolute purity, absolute love. Jesus sometimes makes people feel uncomfortable. The verses following Peter's mindless babbling are insightful. Mark tells us a cloud appeared and covered them. Ever since God led the Israelites in a cloud through the desert, the Jewish people associated God with a cloud. On the Mount of Transfiguration, the voice of God thundered from the cloud, This is my Son whom I love. Listen to him. At this, according to Matthew, the three disciples fell on their faces and were filled with awe. Driven to their knees on the mountain. If there was any question that there was something different about Jesus, it is dispelled here. Son of man. Son of God. Savior of the world, Emmanuel, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. All three Gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, record that God spoke and identified Jesus as his sons and commanded the disciples to listen to him. Suddenly, Mark says, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. Don't underestimate the impact that this encounter had on the disciples, 
Years later, Peter wrote in his second epistle these words. For what we did not follow cleverly devised stories when we were told when we told you about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in power, but we were eyewitnesses to his majesty. He received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him from the majestic glory. We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with him on that sacred mountain. Think for just a moment. These three men were kneeling in the presence of the Son of God, the creator of the universe. In his autobiography, the Ru To Rule the Night, James Irwin, the astronaut that I mentioned earlier, wrote these words. As we flew into space, we had a new sense of ourselves, of the earth, and of the nearness of God. We were outside ordinary reality. I sensed the beginning of some sort of deep change taking place inside of me. Irwin continued, The ultimate effect has been to deepen and strengthen all the religious insight I ever had. On the moon, the total picture of the power of God and his son, Jesus Christ, became abundantly clear to me. Who could not be affected by walking on the moon? Or by being in the presence of Christ as his divinity was revealed. Finally, the, the time came for Jesus to and, and his three disciples to come down from that mountain. And as they descended the mountain, with their minds scrambled by this out of ordinary reality experience, my guess is that they walked back down in silence, trying to process all that had happened. The disciples would make their way back into the valley, but part of them would forever be on that mountaintop. Their fear had been transformed to faith, and the focus of that faith was Christ and Christ alone. As they came down from that mountain, they heard the voice of Jesus instructing them not to tell anyone of their experience until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. More shocking news. The time would come when they would tell everyone, but that was after the resurrection. And that is precisely where we are today, outside normal reality. In our time together today, we've been with Jesus and those three disciples up on that mountaintop. God has revealed himself to us in this person, Jesus. This is my son. Listen to him. In our minds and hearts, hopefully we've been driven to our knees. And now that we are leaving this place, it is our turn to witness with our lives as well as with our speech that we have been outside the ordinary reality. We have been and we are in the presence of the transfigured Christ, Son of Man, Son of God, Savior of the world, Emmanuel, God with us, King of kings, Lord of lords, day by day. Amen. Oh,
us pray. God of life, God of love, you created us and set us in relationship with each other, in families and neighborhoods, communities and countries, cultures and nations. We give you thanks for all the supportive relationships which bring meaning and encouragement to our lives and have meant so much in these times of isolation. Help us contribute what we can to sustain the well-being of our community for all who call it home. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our faith and our future, there are so many pressures on homes and families today. Draw near to those who are struggling in economic difficulty and those burdened by challenges of health and happiness during these winter months. Work with parents and children, married partners and next door neighbors who face conflict, conflict within their relationships. Help them find creative solutions that express mutual respect and resolve tension. Help our congregation support families, whatever their size or situation, as well as people living on their own, to know your love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy and forgiveness, you call us to live together in peace and in unity. We pray for our neighborhoods and our nation. Where people are divided and bitterness turns into resentment, show us how to work for reconciliation. As the pandemic stretches on, we pray for all those whose skill and dedication is needed to support our common life. Wherever we can, may we offer words of encouragement and appreciation so others know how much they matter to you and to all of us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today we give thanks for our church family and for the years of worship and witness offered here. So much has changed for us over these past few months and we pray you will bless our leaders who have to think carefully and creatively so congregational life continues. We remember those of our number in need of your special attention today. Guide us all with your wisdom and insight so we can find ways to reach out to each other in support and in friendship. Open our eyes to opportunities to reach out beyond our own fellowship as agents of your healing and hope. For we offer ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I have a special announcement, and I'd like you to listen to this. This coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, the beginning of the season of Lent. We shall be holding brief worship services on Wednesdays at noon using the YouTube platform, uh, just like we are doing right now. So I hope you will take advantage of these brief worship services, setting aside just a few moments on Wednesdays to reflect on the general theme of this Lenten series. And I've entitled the theme, Getting to the Heart of the Matter. Getting to the Heart of the Matter. And that general theme is going to carry us all through these Lenten noon hour services on Wednesdays. Now, if you can't make that particular time, don't worry. Those services will be available to you at your convenience anytime on YouTube. I hope you found this brief time together helpful. I hope that you have found it encouraging. And I look forward to being with you again next week. So, stay connected to each other. But once again, keep your distance and remember that God is not only connected to you, but that God, the power of love, is always present with you, always and 
forever. Now, keep your eyes focused upon the cross of Christ as you go through the days that are yet before you. Let your judgments go and live and breathe in the light of Christ and the wind of the Holy Spirit. Receive the benediction. And now go in peace. And may the blessings of God, our Heavenly Father and Creator, the love of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and the power and the presence of God's Holy Spirit be upon and within you and all those you love, today and forevermore. Amen.